everyone and welcome. My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic. Today we have a super spicy deck that you've probably run into a number of times recently. But before we dive into that, we need to learn a quick lesson from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators, where you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Recently, I've been struggling with productivity. I used to have tons and tons of energy, and then after kids, somehow that all went away. I've had to learn new tips and tricks to keep myself busy and productive. Skillshare has a ton of awesome classes, like this one from Ali Abdal, all about productivity for creators. I've been able to learn some new tips, tricks, and tools for me to use to help increase my productivity. One of the things I love about this class is that they're in small incremental videos where to increase my productivity, I can watch one of these ones while I'm feeding my baby because I'm a good parent. <laughs> I definitely recommend this class. It's super helpful and it's a good snapshot of the rest of classes that you can be find here on Skillshare. If you're all about learning some lessons, Skillshare has the ability to teach you how to be more productive, how to do new and hard things. And because life is supposed to be enjoyable, there's also tons of classes on how to do really fun things like indoor photography because everyone's stuck inside, how to take pictures of your food for Instagram, how to improve your storytelling for your D&D gatherings, and of course, magic tricks. Skillshare is specifically for learning meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So again, explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. Link is in the description below. So the Naya Showdown deck has been really powerful for a while and Leon and Lightscribe and a few other cards from Strixhaven have just amped this deck up to the max. I've been running into a bunch of different versions of this deck, and this is the version I came up with on the spot. I'll be doing a full breakdown analysis of the deck and the cards that I suggest to replace others in this deck after the gameplay. For the most part though, we want to cast a good early game one drop, cast a clarion spirit, start making spirits, Leon and Light Scribe to help our whole board get bigger all at once, and then show down the skulls to be able to keep filling our board. So that's the deck for today. But real quick, over 73,000 of you guys have been watching multiple videos every single month here on the channel. If a couple of you guys would hit the subscribe button, I might be able to get to 100,000 before too long. So let's go ahead and hit the subscribe button. All right, let's dive into the gameplay. Alrighty, uh, keep this. Hmm. Do I keep this? White source here. We have red mana. I only have two fatal passages, but we keep finding them in the opening hand, which is a little bit awkward. I, mean, I think I mulligan try to find three lands if possible. Aye. Wait, wait, wait. Only Bone Crusher Giants available to me. Mulligan down to five? Man. Deck, would you stop that? Okay, we drop the Guiding Voice. We drop one Jasper Sentinel. We pass the turn. Oh, yeah, we, we play out Jasper Sentinel. We can play out this a token and get another one drop out if we find it. Cycling. Okay. Getting out the Leon and Light Scribe right now. Um, I could play that out, huh? It does let us play out the actual Lush Beast on the next turn with a 1-1 out there. Sure. We don't get the massive hit with the Lone Light Scribe, but going wide against this deck I think is actually what we're needing to be able to hit really hard. Right, that's still a really fast turn. <coughs> Trying to Stinger. Okay, a lot of Fable Passages. Well, let's... Let's just... Uh, tap down here. Pass the turn. So we just barely drew a land. What are the odds that we draw another land off the top? I think they're pretty slim. Okay. So no Love Struck Beasts available. Still a good blocker. Let's go ahead and grab Red Source. Uh, shuffling there might be the worst play instead of actually just trying to find something else. We have another land to be able to uh, get both of them at once, have a little bit better mana ability. Um, oh, this is good. This is perfect because then we get to, yeah. Oh, this is so good. 
Okay. Big hit here. I think we could swing in pretty aggressively as well. Here and here. We won't trade off the light, Scribe. Down to 12. Love Shook Beast number two. Spike Field Hazard is what they played. It seems interesting to play in the cycling bag. I guess they do need some removal every once in a while. It does, does kill enough things in the format. And they're usually holding up mana anyway. All right, come on. Guiding voice? Guiding voice would be amazing here. We get to learn and cast two spells. We'd have to tap down something with Sentinel, but that'd be fine. So this is instant speed. So we hold up full control. We go to combat. Yeah, hold up full control. Um, we do this now. Kill the Flourishing Fox. Okay, take off control. I don't know how to stop during the combat phase anymore. Before, you would just be able to, like, put the stopper on the combat thing. It's right behind me right now, and it doesn't allow that anymore. Good game, sir. Yeah, that was that was sweet. Okay. <laughs> this deck's powerful. This is a really good deck. All right, up against kill, and we will keep this hand. Ah, oh, not the best of colors and things. Nothing to really go. We don't have a one-drop. If we find a red source where you can do some cool things, I mean, it's, it's not a not keepable hand. I don't know, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I, I keep having some of the worst luck ever with my my hands and draws lately. Um, I, I've been playing a lot of Magic today, and so many things have gone not my way. Um, I think we still get out Dragon Guard's Elite here. Pass the turn. We'll try to stomp something. Just get the selfless savior dead, most likely. Luminarch Aspirant, okay. Counter onto the selfless savior, interesting. Right, no blocks. All right, opponent finally passed their turn, so we get to play this out um, we get to attack in first I do want to stomp the Lumeric Aspirant just to kill the Selfless Savior alright so they don't block so now we do it to get the extra point of damage we know that they're going to protect the Lumeric Aspirant I didn't want them to block here though and get the Indestructible so we're good yeah, Aspirant will get annoying but that's also fine. Down to 17. Pass the turn. We should get more counters onto this guy than they will get onto him. Daxos is a bit annoying, however. And an all the Lice Bounty. Okay, come on, one more Bone Crusher Giant. Let's do it. Counter to the all seed. Down to 17. All right, so I think what we do is we go for a showdown of the Scalds here. We have the Shepherd of, of the Flock to bring it back to hand later on. Um, I think we typically want more white mana. I could attack in to see if they'll actually block, but they have the Chump Blocker with Daxos anyway, so all we do is lose on that one. Holding back a blocker can be pretty good for us here, though. So we'll hold up for a smidge. That's a lot of spells for the next turn. Good stuff. I like it. There's a Mothra. Mothra's annoying. That's a little bit terrifying. We don't actually have a ton of removal. All right, hits with the all seed, no blocks. We'll take it down to 14. At least Spellbinder is nice. Um, I don't think we play it this turn, though, because we want to be able to play out more stuff. 
So put this out on red. We only have so many green sources, huh? Maybe I do play out the forest here instead. And then I don't get red source later. Yeah, I, I'd rather be able to play my stuff out. Uh, let, let's make sure here first. So let's go clearing spirit first. Counter there. Um, yeah, I just bear a sentinel. Counter onto the spirit. Forest. Love Shark Beast token. And I can blink back the with the Shepherd of Flock now and get more counters onto stuff. I can do that at instant speed as well. Um, the guy with reach can get some more counters, right? That seems legit. The issue here, though, is if I'm casting more spells on the next turn, if I bounce this back, I actually don't get plus and plus and counters onto my stuff. Um, and what am I doing next turn? I probably want to cast a bunch of spells and then this. Although I need some more white mana. Um, all right, let's go for it now. All right, bring back one of the Scalds back to hand. Target creature, let's get Sentinel to have a few more counters. All right, now we have blockers for days. Uh, we can attack in. They have to triple block. Which, as long as we get to kill a Luminous uh, Broodmoth, Luminous Broodmoth, we're just fine. So swing in. I think they have to take the six here. I think it's their best play. Daxos comes back as a player, right? Or, or that can happen. Yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> but now the next time we kill it, <laughs> we got him. <laughs> uh... Linden, oh my gosh, so much life gain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe I should have Elite Spellbinder. Well, at this point, they're going to be able to cast basically anything anyway. This is just comes in as a blocker, really, a way to kill a Luminous Broodmoth. Okay, they're attacking like that. Sentinel does have reach, which is nice. We can block the Brood Moth. Stop three points of damage there. Um, I could double block on the All Seed. I think getting more bodies on board is actually going to be more helpful for us, though. But we do need to stop it this turn, so we will. We have plenty of one drops uh, that we'll find with Clarion Spirit, especially a second one here on the next turn. If we hit land, we get to Showdown into or Clarion into Showdown. Otherwise, we clear on into Love Struck Beast. That's decent. All right, Clarion Spirit. Into Edgewell Innkeeper, into Shepherd of the Flock, and draw cards instead. If we're creating a Flying Blockers, we can at least kill the Broodmoth eventually. This can trade off with the Linden. Huh. Chump blocker here. Let's let's hold off with some spells until we have the showdown the scalds. Um pass the turn. Actually, yeah, I could attack in, but then they just get a flying linden. <laughs> we can't we can't keep doing this. At the same time now, now they can attack in just fine, so maybe I should be attacking in here. So attack in. They have all seed to pr protect something as well. I, I think I do try to kill this. We have flying blockers, and we should have plenty for days. Days and days. Especially with the card draw from Edgewell Innkeeper and Showdown of the Scalds and whatever else. Like we're, we'll be able to build a wide board. They're just gaining a million life along the way, so we have to find ways to actually slow this down a smidge. Okay, flying Luminar Gasparant. Terrifying. Pass the turn. Skyclave Apparition takes the Innkeeper or a Spirit. I think Clarion Spirit could be pretty good. Dragon's Guard Elite is pretty good too. Um, yeah. They keep putting counters onto the All Seed Life's Bounty and they can just keep getting life. 
Counter onto the Luminous Broodmoth. They're swinging with a Broodmoth? Oh, yes. I think they're forgetting that we can just double block stuff. They do have all Seed of Life's Bounty, though, um, to give protection. So I guess that, that does stop it from being good enough. All right, so they gain some life. Uh, we double block like this. All right, that was a good exchange for us. Uh, we're still not in the lead, and we need to find a way to get rid of this brood moth so bad. We have giant killers in the deck. Um, so do we try drawing with these guys with the Edgewell Innkeeper? To find that, or do we go show down to the skull to try to just find more stuff to play in general? Um, we can't really play too much this turn, although I can at least make some more spirits with this and the Sentinel. Uh, card draw, hit a land. We hit high, high chance of hitting a land off of this. Let's just go for it. All right, show down to the scald. I think that putting counters onto our creatures will also help, like being able to put counters onto our spirits to make them a little bit harder to deal with. We have probably two more turns before they outpace us. All right, so we're definitely looking for a land here. Oh, we found a few of those. All right, let's go. What, what land do I need here? Another mountain could be nice. We actually don't need that much red mana. All we have is Bone Crusher Giants and Showdown of the Scalds. At the same time, though, being able to play multiples is nice. Uh, let's go Sentinel. And I guess just Sentinel again? Do I save that to be able to put counters onto things later? Or as a secondary spell? Let's save it. Let's go ahead and throw out Fable Passage. So yeah, you do get to cast it for free. Uh, pass the turn. Playing it now does give us more mana by tapping things down. At the same time, though, these are some of our best blockers now. Uh, at least Spellbinder could be nice to have out there soon. Legion Angel. It's a big boy. Well, crap. <laughs> uh... All right, so typically we do need more white mana than anything else, but I am going to go ahead and grab a mountain now. Especially with these guys, we should be able to fix our mana just fine. Man, what a matchup. We're definitely very far behind at the moment. But I think that we can turn this around really quickly if we find some Leonian Light Scribes, start hitting in. Like, if they go aggressive with a swing, we get to protect just enough stuff, and then we get to swing in for, like, five damage each. You know, give us give us three more turns and we can get to that kind of spot. No attacks. That's good. Another Clarion Spirit is awesome. Counters on two. Another Sentinel. They can give protection from green, but if we can make it big enough not to die right away, it at least slows slows them down more and more. Oh, I forget we get to play more lands from here again. Did I miss? I didn't miss a land drop, right? Okay, we're good. I think we're gonna play out the Love Shuck Beast here. Come on, dude! You've got to respond at some point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go forest. Don't think I'm playing anything out that's red, unless it's a stomp off the top. We have the sentinel still, so we're fine. Okay. All right, we get a few abilities, a few clarion spirits, which is nice. Uh, let's go one more counter there, again for the luminous brood moth. Then we can start growing some of the other ones. Um, 
Spellbinder stops him from playing Legion Angel on the next turn, maybe. And go for another Shonen of the Skulls to start getting even more cards drawn off of this. Um, I have to tap down all of my guys. Draw some more cards. Counter on two. Let's go one of these. Charge through is nice for later. Um, we need to find the Leonin Light Scribe and soon. <laughs> Pass the turn. We only had one of the Shepherd of the Flocks. I, that was one of the issues with this deck is I feel like there's so many pieces that I want to have in the deck. Uh, and I don't know which ones are the perfect cards just yet. And it, we'll probably be making some changes as we go along. That's why there's one Spellbinder, a couple of one of like the Charge through, like whatever else. But if we find some Leonin Light Scribes, man, this deck just goes insane. Counter onto the Daxos. Our life total is still at 12. It's a very low life total. All two life bounty can protect something. We got Jesper Sentinel big enough that they at least can't attack in aggressively this turn. And we go to my turn. All right. White source. Yeah, we play another showdown. Counters onto maybe just another one of these guys make it bigger. Yeah. These can't get hit by a Skyclave apparition. So if I make one really big one, that's pretty decent. Come on, dude. You got here you go, my friend. There we go. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I did it. Um, no more white mana. Do I want to play the Elite Spellbinder? We really need to find a show, uh, <laughs> Light Scribe. We're, we're 30 cards deep. We have four of these. We haven't found a single one. Come on, deck. <laughs> Do I showdown right away again? We can play that on the next turn, which is probably better. So let's go Guiding Voice. Put a counter onto this one. Counter there. Get a few more spirits. Can stop things from being able to do anything. I, I can also just destroy a creature. Do I have anything there? Exile permanent. So I can get rid of the brood moth. Although they can give it protection right away. Protection from colorless though doesn't happen. I should have kept the 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 colorless version. Um, mascot exhibition is that actually worthwhile here? I think it's academic probation that we play when we find a light scribe. Eventually. Okay, Jasper Sentinel. Counter onto this one. Um, Elite Spellbinder. Tapping down Digital Innkeeper again. Counter onto this Sentinel. I mean, we're going to play out our entire deck before we do anything, but we have to find the only light scribes. If we find two of them, we're, we're, we went wide enough now that we can do all the damage in the world. We just have to have enough spells. So I'm also not casting some spells here purposefully. Unless they're with the showdown of the scalds, then it doesn't make sense not to, but. I do wonder if I want to have a, a lore holds, um, lore hold command in the deck as well. That could be really useful. You pass the turn. No attacks. I guess I could go in Love Shook Beast, but they, yeah, that's fine. You know, do we go with in Love Shook Beast? Maybe we do. What else are we doing with it? Oh, never mind. They just double block with two big things, right? Okay, yeah. 
Uh, as we, are there two big things they can block with? They block with Daxos and Allseed, and it dies. Luminar it dies. Anything else we can at least kill, and I think I'm down to kill just about anything. Lynn would be annoying to come back as a flyer, but at least it'd be, you know, not coming back later. Uh, Apparition, though. Okay, wait. Apparition would come back, and that's bad. Okay, pass the turn. So we just be patient. We're good. <laughs> we have plenty of blockers. We do want to keep as many of those guys around as possible, but we're good. Oy. Speaker of the Heavens. That's bad. At least they can't play the other Legion Angel. Wait, no, they have exactly enough to do so. Never mind. But not be able to hold up the Alcy Life Bounty. Just going to throw that out there. All right, so what does this say? Uh, they can't cast... Opponents can't cast spells with the chosen name until the next turn. Our target non permanent can't block or activate its abilities. Count on to a Daxos. Okay. And we need some life gain as well. Pass to my turn. The Clarion Spirit. Sweet. Uh, okay, Clarion Spirit. Counter on to... I guess another Spirit? Show down the Scalds number two. Create a few tokens. Alrighty. We finally... Yes, we did it. We have done it. Oh, yeah. So stop on their upkeep, actually, and we, uh, we use Bone Crusher Giant there. So... Um, or do we? Leon and Light Scribe. Counter onto. It's another Sentinel. Let's see here. Yeah, the, the Skyclave Apparition is the thing that we're most worried about. Um. We want to be able to cast spells on the next turn and go big. So let's actually throw out a green source here. Dragon Guard's elite. Man, I'm not sure if this will be enough on the next turn, but we get to cast a few spells. We need we need uh, a couple more light scribes still. Pass the turn. Oh, they start making angels with Speaker of the Heavens. If we find one more uh, light, light scribe off the top, which I mean, what is our chances of hitting one? I think it's the only card we haven't hit like most of them of. self Saver's fine. Because we're trying to do all the damage in one turn. Okay, light scribe. Yeah, we have so many cards out of the deck now. 12% chance of fighting it. Uh, we have more Love Struck Beasts to find as well, which would also still be good. They're going to have to block really aggressively as well to not be dead. So right now we actually want them to attack in and try to keep as many of our guys alive as possible. And then we get to cast at least three spells, getting one thing to not block. Not an angel, okay. I think that's the last one. Oh, one more. Another spell off the top would still be good, too. We can actually draw a card with Bone Crusher Giant as well. Draw a card with Charge Through, so we could try to go off here. Hopefully, we find a Lone and Light Scribe before then.
This is a crazy game. I like this game a lot, but this is a crazy game. <laughs> wow. Yeah, who do you put the counter on to? I think it is still Daxos, yeah. That's one that we can give Academic Prohibition to, so we're fine. Uh, they can actually swing in with it now. Which, if they do, we're fine with that too. Um, pass to my turn. Yeah, we do still have that one. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's so big. That is so big. Whew. Okay, we get to put two counters anytime time that we cast a spell onto something as well. So, Leon and Light Scribe. Yes. Counters onto a couple of things. Um, let's go... We put it all into one big thing so that we can have all of the, all of the damage go through or do we spread spread the love? Because we're going to charge through on something. Hmm. We'll spread it between two big things. That way, only one of them gets blocked by the biggest thing. The other one's probably going to be chumped. They don't know about the charge through. I, I think we got this. Uh, the only question here is, do I try to draw cards now to try to find another Leonian Light Scribe? So I think what I'll do is I'll probably Bone Crusher Giant and hit um, Aspirant. So play this out on red. Sure. All right. Stompy boy, Lumeric Aspirant. Grow the entire team. Get a bunch of more spirits. So we actually have blockers for after. Um, counter. Counter. All right. How much mana do we have? All right, we have exactly enough to cast what we have in our hand. All right, so they sacrifice the self a savior. It comes back anyway. Yeah, I guess I should have waited on that. That's fine. I'm casting another spell, which is what matters here. We're making our team really, really big. 12 3 3 is coming in soon. Uh, all right, so play out a bunker giant. Try to draw another card here. Also get more counters onto things. Um... They're stomp. Uh, still, we need to get the Daxos gone. Um, let's go with Daxos. All right now, I think I just put counters onto the one. All right, attack in. This is instant speed, right? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, all attack. Oh, man. <laughs> 12 five fives. That might be enough. I don't know. There's, there are going to be seven sevens in a little bit. This is a 14-15, about to be bigger with trample. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I I did mess up a little bit. I could have attacked him with Love Struck Beast there as well, um, and that that is a relevant card because it tells it's going to be dealing eleven points of damage here. So I could have waited and not played the Bone Crusher Giant right away and done everything at instant speed. Um, the extra card draw there that we got two extra counters onto different things anyway. I'm not sure how relevant that ended up being, but whatever, we did it. This deck is crazy. Okay, Linden onto that guy. That's fine. Charge through will get through that plenty well. Opponent's going to take some time uh, <laughs> jumping here. Going through the blocks. I don't know what their, their best play is here. They're double blocking stuff. Dude, you do realize there's 12 five fives coming through, right? All right, I, I'm going to skip ahead to the end of blocks.
Is that the end of blocks? Okay, they they they're giving up. Okay, cool. Charge through <laughs> onto this as well. There we go. Yeah, put it put it scooping up, but that's fine. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh, this is so much damage. I'm excited to see how much this is. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, man. So good. So good. I like this deck so much. All right, up against Massacre Worm, and we keep this. I think we do make the token right away as well. So, Love Shook Beast token, man. I, I'm not sure if we should be holding these up as one mana instants and sorceries that we can cast with stuff, or if we should be getting out the creature right away. I, I, I don't really know what's the best way to go with that. Uh, now do we lead off with the Light Scribe to have stuff, the, the Vanguard Elite. Clarion Spirit's only good if we actually cast multiple things, which it's not looking like we'll be able to do right away. So I think we actually go for the Elite here. Swing in. They're going to have Heartless Axe, and so I'm hoping this will be a good way that we can kind of build one thing up and start hitting in for lots of damage. Light Scribe is so good, though, but it's also something I didn't expect to actually cast this turn, and we didn't. Um, so let's swing in first. They're going to be nervous to Heartless Act because we might have a spell in response. Now we'll go Light Scribe, and they kill Dragon Guard's Elite. This, this technically does more damage, so they'll probably kill this if they have a Heartless Act. Just a Shark Typhoon for zero. Yeah, this is a very aggressive hand. Um, now, if we hit a land... Please land. Why not a land? Um, guiding Voice. I um, Heartless Act's the Dragon Guard's Elite instead. Definitely the worst play. Uh, the Light Scribe is so much worse. All right, how do we deal with this? We might just have to go for the Environmental Sciences here. Just try to hit land. But if we hit land, then it's kind of worse. That's okay. Let's hit for a bunch. Hit for eight. Down to eight. Pass the turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if we hit a land, we can actually uh, maybe Bone Crusher. Okay, they have Eliminate. That's what they're going for. Cool. Um, hmm. They put out another threat. We have Stompy Boy to do stuff later. We can get them down to six. We can probably get them close to two with just the Bone Crusher Giant. I haven't hit a land yet. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and um, I want to play more a red source. I I think we're just gonna have to forget about those and go for the Edge Wing Keeper here though. Let's just get some card draw with these guys. Possibly it, it'll probably force them to still have Extinction Event on this turn if they go for it, which is pretty good for us still. And there's a red source. All right, go Leon and Light Scribe. If this revolves, we get the stomp and win. Okay, they saw it coming. Okay. Pass the turn. You probably still play out the stomp. Okay, opponent scoops it up. Sweet. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's good. That was that was a bad hand. That was not a good hand, and then we still had so much power. Okay, so 100% win rate so far with the, the, the Lilden Showdown, which is fantastic. Uh, second version, because uh, I, I had to make some changes. I tried to get the, the stats to actually match up based off the changes I make. Uh, this deck is super fun. <laughs> this deck is so, so good. Uh, and we saw even some bad hands working so well for us. Uh, the mana base is probably the biggest quirky thing of this is that we only have pathways, but we still have the colors we wanted. I think it would be nice to be able to bring in Snarls somehow I don't know how though. There's just too many pathways to really make it work. Maybe you can chain out these two Fable Passages for Snarls, but I think it's less consistent, especially because uh, we do want a lot of white sources and we do need less red sources. Uh, and so maybe, but that's the only color that we can work with is the Lorehold colors, the, the white and red together. We don't have any other colors that really work with this. Uh, Dragon's Art Elite felt pretty solid in this deck though. I can definitely see that coming out to fill in more, more places. Uh, light Scribe was so busted, so good. And I think that I wanted more spells. Um, the biggest issue, I don't, I don't really like uh, Shepherd of the Flock though. 
you know it's target permanent you control to its own extent that can be lands i just realized that you can just bring back a land if you're just looking for the extra point of damage and you can bounce the land back if you haven't played the land drop for that turn two you have an extra mana to play something else as well like uh shepherd of flock into guiding voice or whatever so maybe maybe uh maybe more shepherd of flocks is better i just haven't played with it as much with this but if it gives you more land and light scribe triggers it's worth it it's good <laughs> it also more of these means more card draw from edge well innkeeper uh innkeeper felt really solid all of the decks seem really solid uh the hardest thing is probably making sure that you have instant speed things for the lush piece i i played guiding voice just so that we can have the the lesson ability and mostly because i was doing the skill share sponsorship for this one and i wanted to make sure that i had the the skill share uh <laughs> uh you know less learn the lesson you, know, you, you guys got it okay cool uh by the way yeah check them out down in the description below if you guys will um it helps support the channel for sure um and yeah this is this is the deck i had a blast with it i hope you guys had a blast watching um i, I think this is really good you're probably gonna see lots of different versions of this uh, i i saw one person playing something like uh felidar um retreat version with scoot swarms and pests as well where it's a little bit different colors but same type of shenanigans that's just super busted there's so many things you can do with magecraft and little night scribe is really powerful so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks so much and bye bye